Hello friends, so here is another question on full wave rectifier circuits. So the question is that with res uh, reference to the circuit diagram which is given here, we have to determine the peak value, the DC value, the RMS value and the AC component of the load voltage okay, across this 100 ohm load resistance same parameters that is peak DC RMS AC component for load current which is flowing through this load resistance the ripple factor the peak and average diode currents and the total power supplied to the <clears throat> okay so first we have to copy uh, this uh, circuit diagram here Copy, paste, okay, here. So, this is here a center tapped full wave rectifier, okay. It is a center tapped full wave rectifier. Next, we are given the turns ratio 2 is to 1. Using that, we will be determining the secondary winding voltage. Now, the turns ratio NP by NS is related to the primary winding voltage and secondary winding voltage. This RMS, RMS. VP RMS is this okay 220 volt the RMS value or the primary winding voltage because the main supply 220 volt RMS is connected to the primary winding that implies NP by NS that is 2 by 1 is equal to 220 by VS RMS that is the RMS value of the secondary winding voltage plus VS RMS is equal to 220 by 2 is equal to 110 volts <clears throat> this is the RMS value the maximum value of the secondary winding voltage VS max is equal to 110 into root 2 okay that is equal to 156 volt okay 110 into root 2 rounding it off okay 110 into 155 per if we just round it off it, it will be 156 okay uh, now here the important thing the important difference between bridge type and the uh, center tap full wave rectifier circuits is the secondary winding voltage here is 156 volts okay 156 but from the center tap point to the other this voltage gets equally divided that is 156 by 2 and 156 by 2 which is equal to 78 volt and here 78 volt <clears throat> okay which is the maximum value of the center tapped point voltage okay VCTP max we can call it and that is equal to here is the peak value or the maximum value of voltage to which the diode is subjected okay this okay so same first the peak value of the load voltage is equal to 78 volt okay and here it has been mentioned that diode resistance is to be neglected because the diodes are ideal so yes the peak value or maximum value to which the diodes are subjected to load voltage it is equal to 78 volt because the same voltage appears across the load because the diode behaves as a short circuit when it is on it offers zero resistance so no voltage drop across it no voltage drop so this entire voltage 78 volt 
it appears across the load resistance okay this then uh, it has been asked to find the dc value now we know dc value is equal to 2 v max by pi for full wave rectifier circuits so that is equal to 2 into 78 by pi which is equal to this coming around <coughs> 2 into 78 it is coming around 49.6 volt okay 49.6 volt see here I round it off okay 110 into root 2 155 point something it was coming which was close to 6 so that's why I round it off to 156 if you if you use the 155.5 value then different values will come so here I am rounding it off okay so 49.6 volt that is the DC value then we have is the RMS value of the load voltage this is the DC value of the load voltage this is the peak or maximum value of the load voltage which is 78 volt and then the RMS value Here the RMS value of the load which is equal to V max by root 2 so here it is the maximum value of the load voltage divided by root 2 which is equal to 78 by root 2 that is equal to it is coming around fifty five point one five so fifty five volt okay fifty five volt that is the RMS value the low voltage so all the parameters associated with voltage load voltage have been determined now we have to determine the same for load current so we'll be using the same values the maximum value of the load current that is equal to the maximum value of the load voltage divided by load resistance the maximum value we determined here it is 78 volt which is the maximum value of the secondary winding voltage with respect to the center tap point v sec max by 2 so here it is 78 volt by load resistance rl is 100 ohms okay 100 ohms that is equal to 0 0.78 ampere next the DC value of the load voltage that is equal to 2 IL max by pi that is equal to 2 into 0 0.78 by pi which is equal to 0. 496 ampere okay 2 into 0 0.78 by pi next 49 0 0.496 milliampere then we have the RMS value of the load current that is equal to IL max by root 2 this is for full wave rectifiers these these formulas so it is 0 0.78 here the maximum value of load current which we have calculated by root 2 <coughs> that is equal to this coming 0 0.55 0 0.55 ampere okay so the same parameters that is maximum value dc value rms value have determined for load current yes another thing which we have missed ac component of load voltage okay this one we have missed okay ac component so ac component is basically it is called as ripple okay the ripple value so it can be determined for voltage as well as current so here it is ac component of voltage that is ripple voltage we have to determine and uh, this ripple voltage formula i think we have discussed it previously also it is given by 
the RMS value square minus the DC value whole square root over this same goes for current also for current ripple current will be IRMS square minus IDC square root over so we have determined here VRMS VRMS we have determined uh, it is 55 so we'll put the value 55 square VDC we have also determined VDC 49.6 so it is 55 square minus 49.6 square root over that is equal to it is coming around one minute 55 square minus 49.6 square that is equal to 23.767 or 23.8 okay 23.767 volts we can round it off 23.8 volt okay this this is the ripple voltage or the ac component of the voltage same that is ac component of that is ripple component of current ripple current that will be equal to IRMS square minus IDC square which is equal to we have determined here IRMS is 0 0.55 whole square amperes okay 0 0.55 ampere whole square minus uh, DC is 0 0.496 ampere that is 0 0.496 whole square that is equal to it is coming around zero point two three seven six or two three eight zero point two three eight ampere okay zero point two three eight ampere rounding it off that is the ripple current next we have to determine the ripple factor so ripple factor formula is related to the ripple voltage and ripple current okay so ripple factor here we'll be using the voltages that ripple factor is equal to root over of vrms square minus vdc square by vdc basically it is ripple voltage by DC voltage you can also determine it using current that is ripple current by DC current either way you will get the same result so ripple voltage we have determined that is 23.8 volt DC voltage we have determined that is 49.6 volt 49.6 yes 49.6 if you want to determine it using ripple current that is 0 0.238 divided by 0 0.496 amperes amperes will get the same value okay so that is equal to it is coming 0 0.479 so rounding it off 0 0.48 this that is the ripple factor next is the peak diode current so here the peak and average diode currents they are the same as the load current why because the diodes are ideal they have zero forward resistance so when here when during the positive half cycle the diode it behaves as a short circuit okay uh, let me explain it here okay so when the diode it behaves as a short circuit the same current it flows through the load resistance okay the diode current which it flows here the same current it flows as load resistance through this load resistor 100 ohm so here the diode current is the same as the load current so here the peak value or the maximum value of the diode current is equal to the maximum value of load current 
which we have determined here IL max IL max is equal to 0 0.78 ampere and the average value of diode current that is the DC value of diode current is the same as the DC value of load current which we have determined which is equal to IL DC 0 0.496 ampere same thing okay because when the diode is on it is conducting it behaves as a short circuit and the diode current which it which flows through the diode the short circuited diode or the diode which is on in the conducting state same current flows through the load resistor okay 100 ohm load resistor so id is equal to i in this case okay next is the total power supplied to the road so the total power supplied to the load is equal to the product of the RMS value of the load voltage and the RMS value of the load current that is VL RMS into IL RMS which is equal to VL RMS we have calculated 55 volt IL RMS is 0 0.55 ampere so it is 55 volt to 0 0.55 ampere which is equal to 5 into 0 0.55 30.25 watts 30.25 watts that is the uh, power supplied to the load the RMS value always here it has not been asked maximum power supplied to the load in that case it would have been VL max into IL max here simply it has been asked the power supplied to the load so it is RMS value will take okay so this is the thing okay so here a very uh, good question which involved a lot of parameters some new concepts also we discussed here okay so this is the solution